Namaskaram you lovely people out there hope you guys are doing good today we are going to talk about countable and uncountable nouns all right we've talked about what is a noun types of noun in the previous lessons and today we are going to cover very important topic countable and uncountable nouns hope you're ready i'm ready let's do it all right guys so we'll start with the very first type of a noun countable noun it's not going to be easy i'm going to ask you a question now what does come in your mind when you look at the word countable? Tell me. Tell me what has come. What has come in your mind when you look at the word countable? Tell me. You think it can be counted? If you think that, you can't be more right. Absolutely correct it is, right? It's a noun that can be counted. Alright, let's break the word. Able, count. A noun name to be able to be counted. Countable noun, right? A noun name that can be counted. This is what it means. Now, when it can be counted, we can make it singular and we can make it plural as well. We can make it singular and we can make it plural. When we make it singular, we use articles A and N with it. And when we make it plural, we use a combination of letters like S, ES, IES, VES at the end of the words and we make it uh, we make all the words plural we'll come to this part later on all right now when i say it can be singular it can be plural you tell me what is it a boy what is it boys what is it a girl what is it girls what is it a car what is it cars what is it a park what is it parks right what is it a flower what is it flowers Okay, so as you guys just saw, it can be used as a singular noun and it can be used as a plural noun as well. Now, we'll come to the plural part. So, we, we have some patterns that we use when we want to make a word plural, alright? So, we use the letter S, use uh, the combination of the letters ES, IES and VES. Most of the nouns that we have in English take the letter S in order to get changed into plural noun. Okay, so a boy becomes boys, a car becomes cars. Okay, when a word ends with the letter H, it takes ES to make it into a plural noun. All right, match becomes matches, this becomes dishes. All right, again, when it ends with the letter F, it takes VES in order to make it plural. Leaf, leaves, Knife, knives. Again, one more pattern. Ends with Y. Uses I E S. City, cities, baby, babies. All right. Now you can refer to this uh, whole chart and uh, get to know more words. All right. That follow this pattern. So we'll revise it one more time, guys. Countable noun, a noun name that can be counted. It can be singular and it can be plural as well. All right. So when it is used as a singular noun, we use the articles A and N with it, right? A and N means one, okay? Instead of saying one car, I can say a car, all right? Instead of saying one apple, I can say an apple, all right? Now, when we want to make it plural, we have all these patterns that we can use. That's all that you need to know about countable nouns. I hope you got it. Now let us move to uncountable nouns. Guys, it's not at all difficult to decipher the meaning of the word uncountable noun. Just look at it. Look at it for once, okay? Let's break it down, okay? Uncountable. Uncountable. Something that is not able to be counted. That's how easy it is. Something that cannot be counted. Okay. What are these things? Now people generally tell you to remember all the uncountable nouns. It's a difficult task to do, man. There are so many uncountable nouns. Uh, not as many as we have countable nouns, but still there are so many uncountable nouns. Can we remember all the uncountable nouns? Not exactly. So what can we do? I'm gonna make your life easy now. I'm gonna tell you the sources the uncountable noun come from. Wouldn't that be great? It'll be great, right? You don't even have to remember all the uncountable, uncountable nouns. You just need to know the sources. After that, you can write all the uncountable nouns on your own. Amazing, right? Exactly. Asi says amazing. Great. All right. One more reason to check my videos out. Okay. Let's, let's, go, let's get back to the topic. So, uncountable nouns. We're studying something. What is that? English. 
right? Can you count English? No, you cannot. You can count English books, right? English uh, journals, but you cannot count English as a language, right? I always say I love you, right? Love is a noun, abstract noun. Can I count love? Can I say I have four love for you? Can you say you have ten love for me? Can you say that? No, right? Water. Can you count water? Can you say I have 50 water, sir? Would you like to have water? I have 50 water. You can't say that, right? So all these words are uncountable. We cannot count, count them. We cannot quantify them, right? We cannot count them using numbers. So as I was talking about the sources they come from, let's get to know them, all right? So the major sources all the uncountable nouns come from are these. Solid matters, all the solid matters in the world, all right? Liquid or semi-liquid, activities, subjects, abstract, in abstract we have concepts or ideas, feelings or emotions, and then the last we have qualities that we also call attributes. Before that, I'm gonna talk about the common uncountable nouns that we make mistakes with, okay? These are advice, bread, ice cream, cheese, furniture, information. Let's start with the word advice. People say, I need some advices. <laughs> I need some advices. Oh, great. You can't say that, dude. You simply can't say that. You can say, I need a piece of advice. You can say, I need some pieces of advice. But you cannot say, I need some advices. If you say that, you're wrong. You can't be more wrong. You're wrong. You can't say that. The second word is bread. This is what it is. Bread. Now you'll say, sir, you're wrong. Don't teach us something wrong. Bread is countable, we can count it. No, you can't. See, bread is a material, all right? We use the word bread in two ways. When you refer to the word bread as a substance, as a material, you cannot count it, right? Right? You can count the loaf of bread, you can count a, a, a packet of bread, but you cannot count the material, the substance, bread. So it's always uncountable, always remember this, okay? Now the second word or the third word is ice cream. Now again, you'll say, sir, I'll slap you real hard. Ice cream, we can count ice cream, right? Don't, don't tell us it's uncountable. You can slap me as many times as you want, but still, dude, it's uncountable. Okay, this is what ice cream is. Guys, you can count cubes of ice creams, you can count cones of ice creams, but you cannot count ice cream as a whole, as a substance, as a material. This is what ice cream means, all right? You can count this, you can count the cone, you can count the cube, but you cannot count the substance ice cream. I hope you get it. Cheese. Can you count cheese? Huh? Can you count cheese? This is what cheese is, okay? Again, this is a material, this is a substance. You cannot count it. You cannot say, I have four cheese, you have five cheese, he has seven cheese. You cannot say that. Cheese is a substance. Again, you can count a packet of cheese, all right? Uh, a cube of cheese, all right? But you cannot count cheese as a whole, as, as, as a whole, as a substance, as a material. You cannot do that, right? Now we have furniture. Furniture is a very common word that we use wrongly. Furniture is a name given to uh, certain things. Obviously you can count chairs, you can count tables, you can count bed, uh, you can count uh, Elmira, but you cannot count furniture because it's a term given to something, okay? You cannot count terms, all right? So always use it singularly. The last we have is information. I have so many informations. How many informations do you want? If you say that, you're wrong because informations is incorrect. It's a singular noun, all right? It is always used as a singular noun. So no information. Give me a piece of information. Give me some pieces of information, but no informations. Never do that. Okay, so these are some common uh, uncountable nouns that we use as countable nouns sometimes. So don't make these mistakes, guys. All right, I'm telling you, never do that. Now, let us come back to the categories, to the sources that we have, where all these uncountable nouns come from. So we have solid matters like iron, plastic, gold, bread, cheese. We just discussed these two, right? So iron, can you count iron? 
Now you can count rods made out of iron, but you cannot count iron. The same goes with plastic, you cannot count it. You can count toys made out of plastic, but you cannot count plastic as a material, as a substance, okay? Gold, can you count gold? No. Can you count bread? No. No, you can count a loaf of bread, but you cannot count bread. Cheese, can you count it? No. Next we have is liquid or semi-liquid, water, milk, juice, tea, coffee. All right, let us talk about tea and coffee. I have seen people say that give me a tea, give me a coffee. Guys, remember this is, this is very important. When they say give me a coffee, they mean a glass of coffee or they mean a, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. They do not mean the material, the liquid tea, because you cannot count tea, you cannot count coffee. That's incorrect if they say give me a tea, give me a coffee. But they mean give me a glass of coffee, give me a cup of coffee, okay? They do not mean give me the, the liquid tea or coffee. Always remember that, okay? So we cannot count all these liquid things, okay? Water, can you count water? No. If I say give me some water, I'm cooking something, let's suppose. I'm cooking something and I tell you to bring some water. You bring, you bring 50 liters of water because I did not tell you the quantity. Now you, now you say, sir, you did not tell me the quantity. Maybe I needed two glasses of water. Maybe I needed one liter of water, but I did not tell you. So again, you need to be very specific. Water is uncountable. You can say, if you want to quantify it, you can simply say a glass of water. You can simply say a bottle of water, one liter of water, two liter of water, but you simply cannot say uh, two waters. Three water, four water, oh, you can't do that dude, you simply can't do that. Now next we have is activities. You might have a confusion regarding this, but you've checked out, if you have checked out the previous lessons, you would not have any confusions. Okay, let's talk about it now. Activities as such, teaching, smoking, dancing, speaking, listening, watching, huh? You'll say sir, all these names are activities acting as a verb. Yes, they do, but they also act as a noun when used in a certain way. If I say, I love you, I love Rohit, Rohit is a noun, but I can also say, I love teaching. That I do, I, I really love teaching. So teaching is not a verb here, it is a noun. So all these activities are also uncountable. You cannot say, um, I have many teachings, huh? He knows many smokings. Huh? She knows many drinkings or dancings. You cannot say that. You simply can't say that. Okay? <laughs> A big no. Can't do that. Now, next we have a subjects. Okay. Subjects. Interesting. What are you studying right now? English. Can you count English? No, you simply can't. You can count English books, journals, right? But you cannot count the language English or the subject English. Okay? Finance. Economics, uh, psychology, so many subjects we have, we cannot count them. Okay, I cannot say I am reading four English, I am reading four finance, three finance, five geography. Can't say that, ain't happening. Okay, <laughs> the next we have is abstract things. So in abstract things, we have, again, further three, three categories that are concepts or ideas, feelings or emotions, and qualities that we also known as attributes okay we'll start with the very first category concepts or ideas knowledge education politics justice i'll just come this side freedom all these names are nothing but concepts or ideas they're not they do not have a physical existence you cannot touch them okay you cannot count them so all these are uncountable in feelings or emotions we have love we have hate Happiness, loneliness, anger, fear, and so many other names, right, that we cannot count. Very easy it is. Qualities or attributes, honesty, somebody somebody has honesty, somebody has loyal, loyalty, somebody has courage, if you fight a lion, all right, bravery, all right, creativity, all these names are qualities or attributes. You cannot count them. You cannot say, see, I have 10, ten honesty. I am very honest. I have 10 honesty. You can't say that. Okay, understood. Guys, when we want to quantify our nouns, both countable and uncountable, we use some words to do so. Okay, let's understand this. 
Some is a common word that is used with both countable and uncountable nouns. Okay. It means, first of all, it means a positive number. A positive number, so you don't know like what the number is, but it means a positive number. So give me some apples, right? Give me some apples. Apple is a countable noun. We can use this word sum with a countable noun. We can also use the word sum with uncountable nouns as well. I can say give me some water. I can say give me some pieces of advice, right? I can say that. So I can use some with both countable and uncountable noun. I can do that. You can do that. The next in line we have is any. Any. We can use this word with both countable and uncountable noun. Okay. Do you have any car? Do you have any friends? Do you have any laptop? I can also say I don't have any advice for you. I do not have any advice for you. Advice is an uncountable noun. The next is many. Many means a positive huge number, a big number, right? Bigger than some. So I can say uh, I have many lovely students, which I do and I appreciate that you guys are right. Lovely students. So students, student is a countable noun. So I can use the word many with countable nouns. All right. But I cannot use it with uncountable nouns. I can I cannot say I have many water. I have many copper. I have many love. If I do so, I look like a stupid guy, which a lot of people say I am. Oh, let's forget that. Let's not go there. <clears throat> The next is, all right, yeah, we, we left this part. So we use much with uncountable noun. We use many with countable nouns and we use much with uncountable noun. So I'll say there is not much water in the glass. There is not much water in the glass. Again, you cannot qu quantify the exact amount, but you can say much means some, okay? Next is few and a few. Let me tell you, few means almost nothing and a few means a positive amount, okay? If I say I have few friends or I have few, uh, few uh, students, I mean I have almost no one. This is what I mean. But if I say I have a few friends, I mean yes, I do have some friends. This is the difference between few and a few. So the example is, she has a few friends. She has a few friends. So friend is a countable noun. We can use both few and a few bit with countable nouns, but we cannot do so with uncountable nouns. We cannot say, give me few water. Give me a few water. All right, give me a few advice. We cannot say that, I beg no. All right, uh, so we use little and a little with uncountable now, okay, I forgot to add the example. How is it possible? All right, let me give you an example right now. I can say, uh, give me a little, uh, give me a little water. All right, I can say, give me a little uh, milk. Okay, but I cannot say, give me a few milk. Give me, give me few milk. I cannot uh, say that. Okay, so I hope you guys understood what are countable nouns and what are in uncountable nouns, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson i hope i made it easy somewhere so that's about this lesson guys i hope you found it helpful i hope you found it interesting if you did hit the like button subscribe to the channel so that you can watch upcoming lessons and share this video with your friends with the people that you know can be benefited out of this lesson all right share the knowledge with others all right and i'll see you real fast very soon till then keep learning have fun share the knowledge namaskaram i'm out